Welcome to the Factory Cat Magnum Scheduled Maintenance Video, number one of a two-part video series. The goal of this video is to give you, the user, the information and the knowledge needed to maintain the investment in your Magnum Auto Scrubber. Please refer to your Magnum Use and Care Operation Manual for a more detailed maintenance information schedule. The estimated time to complete this maintenance procedure will be between one and one and a half hours, depending on the condition of your Magnum Auto Scrubber. The first step is to use the preventive maintenance Magnum forms found in your Magnum's owner manual, or download them direct from Factory Cat's website at www. Dot .factorycat.com Power up your Magnum with the key switch to confirm that your LCD display is working properly as shown. To the left of the LCD display is the green information button. Press it and record all the hour meter information for key, traction, scrub, and vacuum motors. Record them on your PM form accordingly. Next, check the operation panel from the operator's left to the right side as shown. First, check the reverse and the forward speed control to confirm that the correct machine direction and speed control are within the manufacturer's specifications. Next, check the motion buttons as shown located underneath the control column assembly. Make sure both buttons operate correctly and are free of wear and damage. Next, check the blue solution toggle control for proper operation and solution flow. Right below this toggle is the down pressure toggle. Check this for proper down pressure and operational control. Note that there will always be two bars showing on the low setting of the LCD panel. Next, check the brush deck switch for proper lowering and raising capability, as demonstrated here. Lastly, check the vacuum lever and vac switch for proper operation. The vacuum will stay on for approximately 10 seconds after the lever has been moved to the off position. Located on the back of the panel is the vacuum switch. Move this switch to the on and off position ensuring that the vacuum motor turns on and off according to the switch's movement. When the vacuum is on, the LCD display will show the vac operation icon as shown above. Next, perform a detailed inspection of the solution tank. Check the tank for damage that could possibly cause leaks. This would be a sign of machine abuse. Next, check the front solution fill screen and port. Make sure that the screen and solution cover are in good working condition. Next, check the recovery tank lid latches for damage as shown here. Once this is completed, check the recovery tank sight dome for damage and make sure that the lid is cleaned properly. Make sure that the sight dome seals, the lid bead, along with the lid change are in good working condition as demonstrated here. Once this is complete, check the recovery tank seal, 
lid hinges, and tank beads that they are clean and in proper working condition. Next, check the recovery tank lanyard for any wear or damage. If needed, replace. Remove the gray hose from the drain saver basket. Check inside the hose to make sure that it's free of dirt and debris. Also check the gasket covering the drain saver. Once this is done, check the drain saver itself. Make sure that it is in good working order and it too is free of dirt and debris. Check the drain saver bracket assembly and also the recovery hose. If you find any type of wear or damage, replace accordingly. Next, remove your float shutoff and check that the rubber gasket, metal screen, and float ball are all in proper working condition. Also check inside the vac float and manifold assembly for any type of debris. If any is found, clean accordingly. Ensure that the vac manifold assembly is tight. Next, make sure that the vacuum hose is in good operating condition as well. If any wear is found, replace accordingly. Once completed, reinstall your float assembly as demonstrated here. When working with lead acid batteries, it is important to use the proper body protection that meets your government codes in your country. This would include but not be limited to proper eye protection, hand and arm protection, as well as upper body protection. Note: Make sure your batteries are fully charged before performing battery maintenance. At this point, open your recovery tank housing. To do so, release the two locking clips located on each side of the recovery tank. Make sure that these clips are in good working order as well. Once your solution tank is open, check your battery tank lanyard for damage or wear, as demonstrated here. Next, check the batteries for any type of damage and check inside the battery box for any type of acid spills. If acid is found in the battery box, drain it using the battery box drain hose located on the operator's left side of the machine. Discard the acid properly. Your Magnum has 12 battery cells that need to be serviced for proper water level. The water should be 1 8 of an inch above the top of the lead plate after charge and only service using distilled water. All battery terminals should be free of battery corrosion. Check all the battery cables that they are free of wear and damage and have proper terminal covers over the terminal connections and tighten all terminal nuts to between 90 and 100 inch pounds. A specific gravity test should be conducted on all the battery cells. As mentioned previously, your Magnum will have 12 cells. On a fully charged battery, a reading of 1.260 or above at a temperature of 80 degrees should be read on your hydrometer. If any of these cells read differently than this, it is a possibility that the cell is damaged. Please contact your owner's manual for more detailed information. When testing the cells, look for battery solution clarity. Haziness or particulate in the hydrometer is an indication of a potentially damaged battery cell. Battery Charger Maintenance when inspecting your battery charger, check the AC plug to make sure that it is in proper working order. Pay close attention to the ground plug terminal that it is in good condition as well. Also, check the Red Anderson plug. 
check that the Anderson terminals are not worn or damaged. If any sign is shown of damage, replace the plug accordingly. Next, check the opposite Anderson plug which is located on the back of the control column of your Magnum Auto Scrubber. Check that this plug is in proper working condition as well. It is important that your Magnum charger is an original equipment charger that is designed for your Magnum Scrubber's battery pack. When charging, plug the red Anderson plug into your Magnum first and then plug the AC plug into your wall outlet. Your charger's meter will indicate where the batteries are in the charging process and will automatically turn off when the batteries are charged. Note, just below the charge meter is a viewport for your charger's fuse. If the charger stops working, check this fuse. If blown, always replace with the proper fuse assembly. This concludes video one of Factory Cat scheduled maintenance video. Please proceed to video number two of this two-part video series.